Well, hello everybody, Pastor Randy here. Welcome to Making It Simple. It's great to be with you on this beautiful Wednesday. Looking to wrap up our study today in faith and fear. While there's a lot can, that can be said, you know, about those two subjects, I want us today to kind of move in to the challenge part. Now, while this entire message has been certainly a challenge of our thoughts, now it's time to move to action. I want us to, to give a moment, if you will, to reflection. And then I want us to really look at implementing what this means. As we've, as we've looked at this journey of the folks of Joshua's time as they're looking at the river, I want us to stop for just a moment and I want us to look back at the things that God has done. His promises. When we look back over our life, and I shared with you in a prior lesson about being able to wake up behind my house one morning, and I have absolutely no idea how I got there as far as driving is concerned, and other perilous moments in my law enforcement career, and any of other, even other bad judgment moments in my life that God brought me through. Maybe not spared me from the hurt or consequence or shame or whatever, but brought me through. When we look at the promise of God, as these people are journeying forward, he said, go. Those that were given the promised land, he said, go. There was always excuses along the way to hesitate, to fear, to doubt, all those things. We do the same thing. But when we look back over our life, whether it was yesterday or 20 years ago or however long, we should be able to see that because of who He is, that our faith in His directions, our faith in His promises, that shouldn't be hard to have because He's never failed us. Now, some would argue with me on that because they say, well, this didn't work out or this didn't happen the way I wanted it to. But we never stopped to realize not only had that maybe possibly not been the plan that God had for our life at that moment, but He may have actually been sparing us of something. Maybe there was a relationship that you had your whole heart set on and it didn't work out. But God knew that that relationship wasn't going to work. Maybe there was a job that you had your mind set on. That was going to be, that's it. That's the greatest thing I could ever have, and it didn't work out. But maybe that's not what the plan that God had for you, because God has a plan for his, our lives, and, and it is for a hope. It is for a future. It's not for evil. It's for good. God loves us. God is our Father. He wants to help us. He doesn't always prevent things. It's like Scripture says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That doesn't mean the weapon's not formed. That doesn't mean the weapon's not used. There's lessons to be learned in this life. But we see the consistency of God's faithfulness should indeed reciprocate with us that our faithfulness in Him is in total. It is It is really without doubt anymore because we know that he's there we know we have to be able to separate our disappointments and discouragements and our even our frustrations and angers from what God does and provides because it, it, it's not him picking at us it's not him trying to 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 break our spirit or it's not him trying to be mean or pick on us God's our father Sometimes our kids, they look at us like, well, you're too protective, or you're too this, or you're too that. When actually it's just you, you love them enough to tell them no. You love them enough to say, this is not going to work. There's a lot of different reasons. But when it comes to the things of God, we have every reason to have faith in those. But yet still, we see so many crippled by fear. Joshua has told the people to get ready. We're getting ready to go. The opportunities before us, we're going to go. 
He's instructed those that are carrying the ark to go first, which, as I said yesterday, that is a representation of following God in the presence of the Lord as he went before them during the journey that they were in in the desert. The people had been told what was about to happen. They were going to go. Now, again, remember, they're facing a raging river that is swollen to its banks. I mean, it's it's there. And, and, and so without a doubt, there were some who were like, how is this going to be possible? How could we possibly do this? There were those that were in fear. I'm scared to death. How is this ever going to work out? How many situations do we face? I would even maybe even go as far as saying daily that we have that same thought. How in the world is this going to work out? How are we going to do this? I'm worried to death. And we allow that fear to overtake every element of faith that we ever had and throw it out the window. But we have to remember, as I've been saying, and, and it's not just because I say it, because it's real, fear cripples. Fear, fear steals. Fear robs. Fear blinds. It hinders. Friends, we've got to start trusting in the instructions of God. And having faith in that, that's the key component. That is the key that cranks the engine. That is the key that unlocks the door. Saying it and doing it is two completely different things. So here we see the act of faith was required. What does that mean? He told them when you get to the, when you get to the water, as the sole of your foot touches the water, then you go forward. Now, I'm paraphrasing there, but that's what he, that's what he was saying. So, wait, well, wait a minute, Pastor Ed. You mean I have actually got to do it? Yeah. And action is required. We can't just say it. I'm going to trust that. I want to trust that there's something good behind that door over there. But I'm never going to open the door. But then you don't trust it. I'm going. I'm going to trust that this parachute. I'm going to have faith in this parachute. But I'm never going to jump out of the plane. But then you don't have any faith in it. He said, as soon as you touch the water, in other words, when you actually trust me, that's when things are going to happen. Because nothing's going to happen until a step of faith takes place. When getting your foot wet becomes real. We, we look at the story of Peter. He said, I want to be where you are, as he was speaking to Jesus. Jesus was standing on the water at that time. And, and, and so the words of Christ were the answer. Come. In other words, I'm right here. The opportunity is before you. But it's going to require you get out of the boat because I've given you the opportunity the mountain is before you but I'm not going to climb it for you you have to do that the door is before you it's open but you have to walk through it the river is before you and I've said you could cross it but you've got to put your foot off the bank and into the edge of the shore. Peter had to get out of the boat, moving from fear to faith, moving from, I can't do this. This is, this is not possible. And all the other things that we keep trying to convince ourselves of to, okay, I'm trusting you, God. I, I'm placing my faith completely in you. A and I'm believing that through you, all things are possible. Not just quoting a scripture that sounds good, but actually putting that into action. Now, I'm not talking just to you. I'm, I'm talking to me as well, because fear, fear keeps us in park. Fear keeps us in neutral. And neither of those goes anywhere. The engine will rev and it'll sound good but an hour later you're still sitting there. You ain't going to place. It's like sitting behind a parked car. You don't get anywhere. I mean you're just sitting there. It's like sitting in, in rush hour traffic that doesn't move. 
you just sit there. Scripture tells us as soon, as soon as they touched the water, it came to pass. In other words, something happened. It got real. The waters, which at that time were at the flood stage, they not only stopped, but they divided. And they provided not just a pathway to cross, but a dry pathway. You see, friends, God is faithful. Not only in provision, but in everything that he promises. Just like it tells us in, in the New Testament, in 1 John, where he says he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. But you got to go back to that first part. If we confess them, talk to him. Friends, there's nothing you've done that God can't make right between you and him. There's no stain that's too deep that he can't cleanse. Scripture says he can wash it as white as snow. Though you were once crimson, you can be as white as snow. They had dry land to walk across. Not muck and mire. Not mud up to your knees where, you're, where, where it's sucking you down. No. Dry land. We're only moments before. How can we do this? How's it going to work? Trust me. Step into the water and trust me. We can only imagine at that moment what that was like. That, that, that sense of awe. Like, oh, wow. Look at this. This is amazing. This sense of relief. Wow. God really is good. Why did I doubt him? Why, why did, why, don't we ask ourselves that? You know, that, that, that moment of being blown away, what that moment must have been like to see that happen, right? But, but they'd already been told. We've already been told. All we got to do is believe it. Is it really that simple? Jesus said to him who believes, all things are possible. But the book of James says, don't be like the one that is double-minded, like the like the waves of the ocean back and forth, and I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm back. Because we don't get anywhere that way. Back to this scripture from Joshua, it says, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. That statement alone is something that we have to embrace, but it requires faith in the promise of God, which requires us to ask, has God ever broken a promise? And no. No, he has not. Has it always been what we thought? No. Has it always been what we wanted? No. But it's always been what we needed. And it's always been right at the exact moment. The word wonders in that scripture, it refers to the supernatural. You're going to see something that you typically would never believe. But it's going to happen right in front of you because it's possible because it's God. In other words, it's, 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 it's not just beyond our power, but it's beyond our power to understand. That's the things of God because God's ways are not our ways. It doesn't always work the way that we think it's supposed to. But God's not asking us to reason or figure it out. He's asking us to trust him. Because if he said tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. He's telling you, I'm going to do it. I'm not asking you to. I'm not asking you to help. I'm not asking you to figure it out. I'm not asking you to do anything, but trust me. God still desires to do wonders today, but it absolutely 100% requires faith on the people that trust him. So the question is, do we? Do, 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 we, do we still have faith? Or have we given ourselves over to fear and allow, allow our faith, allow our joy, our love, our patience, our kindness, all of that to be stolen? That is the challenge of today's lesson. Do I still have possession of those things or have I given them up? Have I allowed the thief who only comes to steal, kill, and destroy? 
Now think about that for a minute. The word only there is very important. That is their sole purpose. The thief, when they come into your home, they're not there to visit. They're, they're not there to just uh, look at the layout or the home decor that you have. No, they want to take it. Or they want to harm you or whatever the case. That's what the enemy does. doesn't want you to have patience or joy or kindness or love or faithfulness or any of those things. God's promise still remains today to go before us. He promises to make the path that we have never traveled before safe and possible. Not without a hiccup, not without a pothole in the road. He didn't say that, but he would make it possible. The question is, are we willing to get our feet wet? Are we willing to get our feet wet? Because the wonders of God, the wonders of God, they're still possible. They're still very real. But it's our faith that will allow them to be seen. When we're transitioning from fear to faith, it'll change your life. Not a question in my mind about that. Living in fear is not living. I've said that in several of our prior lessons. It's existing. Living in faith standing in the awe and the presence of God, trusting in His promise. It'll open your eyes to things you've never seen. It will allow you to walk in places you never thought possible. The question is, who are you trusting today? What are you trusting today? Who is your guide? What are you leaning upon? Is it your faith? Or have you allowed fear to take everything away and you don't see anything but darkness before you? Fear or faith? It makes the difference in how your journey will end. I hope you've enjoyed this study on fear and faith. It's been my honor and my pleasure to bring it to you. Lord willing, We'll be back tomorrow with something brand new. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to be yet. I'll study and pray over that today. But God bless you. Thank you for joining me at Making It Simple. You have no idea the joy that I derive from doing this and, and the pleasure that it is to hear uh, the comments and the, 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 the feedback from those who appreciate this little extension of this ministry that God has given me. God bless you. Have a great day. And Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.